Good morning, Cross and Crown. Why don't you all stand up and let's praise God this morning. I'm calling now, light the fire again, don't let my vision die. I'm calling now, light the fire again. You know my heart, my deed. I'm calling now, light the fire again, I need your discipline. I'm calling now, light the fire again. I am here to buy gold, refining the fire, naked and poor. Wretched and blind, I come, clothe me in white, so I won't be ashamed. Lord, let the fire came. Don't let my heart, my day. I'm calling now, light the fire again, I need your discipline. I'm calling now, light the fire again. I am here to buy gold, refining the fire. Good morning, Cross and Crown Lutheran Church. We are so happy that you're with us today, especially if you are visiting. We love having people from the community come on out. Please fill out that special uh, little piece of paper in your bulletin so that we may know that you are here today and drop it in the offering plate when it comes on by. Thank you so much for being here. Let's go ahead and have a seat. We have a few announcements for today. Today is Pentecost. You might notice all the red around these parts. Now, some of us are wearing red. It's not a law or rule or anything, but I'm glad you are if you're wearing red to celebrate. It's a wonderful day where we celebrate the birthday of the church. This is when we remember how in the book of Acts, Jesus comes to the disciples and breathes his spirit on all people. Now, they're speaking in all these different languages, but miraculously, everybody's able to understand one another. And they are filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit. So you'll see fire as one element we're talking about a lot today in our worship service. We have a few announcements for today. We're going to be welcoming some new members. We actually, in the month of June, have 19 new people joining us from so many different families, which is awesome. Yay! We're so glad that the Spirit has led all of them to our church, our congregation. It makes us all richer and better for all of them. 
We then will have a reception afterwards following in the fellowship hall with some cake and cupcakes made by a couple of our congregation members. Yay. And uh, <laughs> thank you. And, uh, and, and introduce yourself to people if you don't know them uh, so that they may know who you are and you may know who they are. We also have Bible study today. If you're following along with adult Sunday school, come on by from 10.30 to 12. We will uh, keep studying, or 10.30 to 11.30, rather. And then later on this afternoon, we will be going to Central City Lutheran Mission in San Bernardino to prepare a meal for the people there at that men's mission. And I will also be leading a service there. Come on to the service as well if you want to hear the same sermon twice. <laughs> it's up to you. We are now collecting donations for Vacation Bible School. So if you'd like to donate some kind of food for lunch for the uh, VBS folks, especially also we have um, four camp counselors that are staying at the Andersons' home. Terry, you, are you aware of that? Okay, good. <laughs> Hoping that's not a surprise to you. <laughs> four counselors are staying there. So if you would like to donate any kind of gift cards to the counselors for food, you know, to a restaurant at McDonald's or something like that, then hand those cards over, please, to Sylvia and Terry if you'd like to help support them. They're staying there for a week, and they eat a lot, I hear. Um, well, I mean, you know, regular teenagers. We also have a special ritual that we're starting um, for Pentecost and for the whole season of Pentecost that goes throughout the entire summer and into the fall, starting today. At the very last song, or the very last hymn of the service, if you'd like to come forward and light a candle, the big pillar will be lit, and you can light a smaller pillar and place it in either the big center area or the glass candle holders around it. If you'd like to leave that um, as a reminder of a prayer, if you're praying for yourself or somebody else, um, please do that at the end of the service, toward the end during the last song. Any other announcements we have this morning? Yes, Gina. Yay. <laughs> There she is, yes. 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 Yes, we will pray for you. And a month in Europe, I mean, it's a sacrifice, but somebody has to do it. Yes. We're all totally envious here. <laughs> Quilting this, sat this Saturday? Quilting this Saturday, thank you. Any other announcements this morning? Okay, I would like to ask Danielle and Casey to come on forward, please, because we are now officially closing up Sunday school for the year. And I'd like this piece, thank you. And these are our two Sunday school teachers who have done so much for our children. So first of all, let's give them a round of applause. And we gave them a, uh, a cross and crown mug earlier to thank them, but I'd like to say a prayer as we close out Sunday school. Let's pray together. God of all good gifts, your son gathered children into his arms and blessed them. Help us to understand our youth as they grow in years and in knowledge of your world. Give us compassion when they face temptations and experience failures. Teach us to encourage their search for truth and value in their lives. Help us to appreciate their ideals and sympathize with their frustrations, that with them we may look for a better world than either we or they have known. Lord God of our ancestors, we thank you for what you have done and will continue to do with our daughters and sons. Walk with them in life. You see all. You know where the water is deep, so keep them from danger. Order their steps and guide their feet while they run the race of faith. May the good work that you have begun in them be brought to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Bless all of our children here at Cross and Crown. Bless all who teach them. Thank you for the patience and the wisdom and the love that Danielle and Casey have given to our children. Thank you, God, for this school year. And we ask for a wonderful summer for all of our children and blessings on us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for all you've done for our kids. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'd like to call up our new members. We've got lots of new people, so come on up, all of you new members. Come on up. 
Thank you. I'm going to hand it back to you. We have Franco, Nora, Angel, Krista, and Luna Duarte. We have Brian, Amanda, and Lucas Nelson. Kathleen Markham. I'll give these to you in just a moment. Yeah. Monica Camus and Baby to, to be. Nicole and Jaden, Jackson, Juliet, and Jacob Lopez. Are they here? I think some are not here today. We have Ashley Margraf. We have Jackie, Sherry, and Alec Britton. And Jackie and Alec also could not be here today. They had something else they needed to do that was very important. So for all of you that are now joining our family here at Cross and Crown, Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and we come before God with all of these beloved men, women, and children of God as they make affirmation of their baptism into Christ. Let us all pray together. Merciful God, we thank you that you have made us your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called us to yourself, enlightened us with gifts of your spirit, and nourished us in the community of faith. Uphold us and all your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. And now all of you that are joining the church. Oh, and also let me, let me bring up Sarah. Sarah is going to be baptized next Sunday. Yay. And so, so she officially is going to be a member next Sunday through baptism, but we wanted to include her in the celebration because there's cake right? Because there's cake. So, so we welcome her as well. Okay, so these are ancient words that have been used in the church for 2,000 years. So before you confess to believe anything, we ask you to renounce those things that are harmful for all people. So just follow my lead here. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Okay, and here is the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and also in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again and ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? If so, answer, I do. You have now made profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? If so, respond, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. And now, people of God, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? If so, answer, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us each new birth. Cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in all these children of your holy heart the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. And now we rejoice with you all in the life of baptism, and together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Amen. Let us welcome all of these brothers and sisters to our family. Can you hand those out, please? Thank you. Yay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. God bless you. Welcome. 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 Yay. Welcome. 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 Can I give you a hug? All right. Welcome.
May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's take a moment and share the peace of Christ with one another. Stand as we sing together.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, O living one, for you have created all, and you water the earth abundantly. Oceans and lakes praise you, rivers and streams bless you. All life is sustained by you, our source. We praise you for Christ, the firstborn from the dead, who frees us from sin and raises us up to new life. Here at this font, we touch the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing through the city of God. Here, death is washed away forever. Here, we are grafted into the tree of life with leaves for the healing of the world. Pour out your Holy Spirit on this assembly, into this community, and throughout all creation. Cleanse us from our fears and drown our divisions. Grant that all may drink of your mercy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. God, our creator, the resurrection of your son offers life to all the peoples of earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear the reading of Acts, the first Pentecost, in a multitude of languages. Nacherim firi o Pentecoste ule Afrikia wa keri wose handuhamu chaili uka ruweu kukocha ndirimu cha ndirimu za mkuma ufoi ukoi chuo numbea wose wawe ramie kukowara yulumi til Tile kanyi le kanyi cha ngiulumita moro ukoka mronyi ko oriomdu avekeri hala Wote wakajazwa Roho mtakatifu wakaanza kusema kwa lugha nyingine kama roho alivyowajalia kutamka na walikuwa wako Yerusalemu wayahudi wakikaa Watu wataua, watu wa kila taifa chini ya bingu. Basi sauti hii iliposikiwa, makutano alikutanika. Wakashikwa na fadhaa kwa kuwa kila mmoja aliwasikia wakisema kwa lugha ya kimwenyewe. Akwete bikuri de. Kotiro no hitobito wa garira ya jin janai desu ka? Sore de ima jibun no kokoko nante kite iru desho ka? パルティアンにメレスの人、エラミテの人、メソポタミア、ユダヤ、カッパトシア、ポンタスとアジの外人、フリギアとパムヒリア、エジプトとシリのリビアのナババリ、ローマの外人、ユダヤ人とプロセリ
sondern die erst ist, weil durch den Propheten Hol gesagt worden ist. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is from Romans. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you, do not re for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Word of God, word of life. We stand for the gospel. First of all, my thanks to those who read in all those beautiful languages, but we can understand them because, you know, we saw it on English and it was like that first Pentecost. So beautiful. Thank you. Imagine all the people praying in their native tongues around the world today. The gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I'm going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O oh Christ. Please be seated and let's have the children come forward. Come on up. Want to have a seat? You all sitting on that side? Okay, go ahead and sit, have a seat here. Hi, right, come on up. Today is a special day in the church. Did you hear what the name is called? Pentecost. Can you say Pentecost? Pentecost. Right, Pentecost. And there are some things that symbolize Pentecost, that remind us of Pentecost. One is the color red. Do you see red around here? Kind of a lot of it. Yeah, this is red. And you see red over here? You see some people are wearing your mom, your dad, exactly. Some people, hi, some people are wearing red. And hi, sweetheart, yeah, you'll see this in just a minute. It's pretty neat, huh, shiny. Well, today is a day where we remember that Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit. You know what the Holy Spirit is? The Holy Spirit is God all around us all the time, but we can't see spirit, the, the Spirit. But we know what the Spirit does. So do you know what this is? Have you ever seen one of these before? This is called a pinwheel. Can you say pinwheel? Can you blow on it? What happens? It spins. Now, can you see the air coming out of his mouth? Can you see the air coming out of my mouth? 
You can't see the air, right? Can you see what the air is doing? You want to try? Blow hard, 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 hard. Oh, in my lab. That's nice. Awesome. Luna, right? Luna and Krista. Okay, Krista, you want to try blowing on it? Nice. Anybody else want to have a turn? You want to try? Blow real hard. Whoa, good. You want to hand it to Sarah? You want to try? You don't want to try? I bet you can. I bet you can do it. There you go. You want to hand it to Joseph? Joseph, blow it. There you go. And you can hand it on back. Did everybody get a try? You did. You want to try? Good job, Lucas. Yeah, and you can't see the wind that's coming out of your mouth, can you? But you can see what it does. And that is one way to remember what the Holy Spirit is like. You can't see the Holy Spirit, can you? The Holy Spirit is God all around us. God is here in this room. God is in our hearts. God is in our homes. God is in your rooms. God is in your classroom. God is everywhere. You can't see the Holy Spirit, but you can see what the Holy Spirit does. Just like you can see what the Spirit does here. <sighs> the wind, right? What are some things that the Holy Spirit does? What do you think? What does God do? Yeah, what do you think? God loves us, yes. What else? Protects us, good. What else? God makes shiny things and things that are pokey like this. What else? Does God, does God ever make you happy? Yes? Somebody was a little sad today, and now he's happy, right? God makes us happy when we're sad. Did you ever, have you ever scraped your leg? Has God ever healed it? God, God heals us. God makes us laugh. And so we can't see God, but you know what? Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit is living in and with each of us. Do you know God's there in your heart? Yeah, God's in this delicate microphone too. <laughs> okay, blow, 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 blow hard. Every time you see one of these, remember, blow hard. There you go. Every time you see one of these, remember how you can't see God, but you see what God does. Blow hard, hard. There you go. There you go. It moved a little bit. Want to blow? One more time. Last time. Last time. You got to look right at it. Look right at it. Put it right in front of your face. There you go. Good. Let's have a prayer. Can you fold your hands? Fold your hands. Go like this. Go like this, Luna. Fold your hands. Good job. Good job. Good. That just helps us to concentrate and to focus on God. So you can repeat after me. Ready? Dear God, thank you for giving us the Spirit to stay with us and to help us and to love us. Even when we can't see you, we know you're there. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, amen. Good job. Okay, you can go on back. Oh, no, you can go out with Miss uh, Danielle, and she'll take you out to last day of Sunday school. Woo! You want to go on out to Sunday school? All right. <laughs> Grace to you and peace from God our Creator, Christ our Savior, and the Holy Spirit our Sustainer. Amen. Well, as I told the children, today is the birthday of the church. It's when we remember how it all began, when Christ filled the disciples with the Holy Spirit, and it wasn't any longer just about what Christ did in terms of the resurrection, but now it became what the church is asked to do, who we in the church are with the power of the Spirit, what we're asked to be. In Martin Luther's day, church was intended to be all about what we do. That's how Luther knew church in his day. When people would gather for the Mass, it was believed that the sacrifice that happened on the altar with the bread and the wine there was the same as the sacrifice that happened on the cross. So it was important that the priest performed the ritual of communion correctly. And it was important that the people came with their best selves, having already confessed their sins, having said all the right prayers, and being behaving Christians. Church was about what the people did, what the people brought to it. And Luther in his theology, he changed all that. He changed the word, in fact, from mass to a German word, probably Kathy knows it, with your lovely German, 
to a German word that means God's service. This is why we now say we're coming to a worship service. And who's doing the serving? It's God. It's not about what we bring to it. It's about what God gives us, how God serves us, how God feeds us with God's very presence, known most fully in the word and in the sacraments of baptism and communion. When we had our new members classes with all of the 19 of us here, especially the adults, asked me the question, so what does it mean then to become a member of the church? Not only here at Cross and Crown, but the church universal, the church throughout the world. What does that mean? In fact, what is it requiring of me? And I answered them all with the same answer, it requires nothing. Absolutely nothing. Sure, there are things you're going to hear along the way that we ask you to do. Please sign up for service projects. We'll probably do a stewardship campaign at some point because it takes the resources that God gives us for us to move them forward to pay things like the light bill so that we can continue on these stories of Jesus Christ throughout the ages as they've been continued on for 2,000 years. So we'll ask you to do a variety of things according to your gifts and talents and abilities, but what does it require of you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You are here only really to be served. Not by me, not by each other, but by God. You are here to be blessed. And there will be times in your life, and I hope that when you're new members, you'll be here for many, many years, even decades to come. And there will be times in your life where you can give only nothing to the church community. There will be times when you've gone through loss or suffering. There will be times when you might even feel despair or cynicism or brokenness. There will be times when you are grieving and you're not over it yet and you will give nothing. And that is okay because you're here to be served by God. You're here to be fed. I'd like to read to you part of a eulogy that Pastor Nadia Boltz Weber, Lutheran pastor, she said this at the uh, service for a bright, young a theological writer, Rachel Held Evans, who died recently. These are her words. Blessed are the agnostics. Blessed are they who doubt. Blessed are those who have nothing to offer. Blessed are the preschoolers who cut in line at communion. Blessed are the poor in spirit. You are of heaven and Jesus blesses you. Blessed are those whom no one else notices, the kids who sit alone at middle school lunch tables, the laundry guys at the hospital, the prostitutes, and the night shift street sweepers, the closeted, the teens who have to figure out new ways to hide the new cuts on their arms. Blessed are the meek. You are of heaven, and Jesus blesses you. Blessed are they who have loved enough to know what loss feels like. Blessed are the mothers of the miscarried. Blessed are those who can't fall apart because they have to keep it together for everybody else. Blessed are those who still aren't over it yet. Blessed are those who mourn. You are of heaven and Jesus blesses you. I imagine Jesus standing here blessing us because that is our Lord's nature. This Jesus cried at his friend's tomb. He turned the other cheek and he forgave those who hung him on a cross. He was God's beatitude, God's blessing to the weak in a world that admires only the strong. Some days you'll have nothing to give. And that's okay because you're blessed. But then the day will come. When you're a little bit more healed, a little bit more settled, a little bit more secure, grieving a little bit less, the day will come when you will feel a fire deep within your belly because the Holy Spirit has been planted there. You will know that this thing that we call church is not just sitting back and being served. And as much as it's okay to remain in that receptive position of only being served, you will want, you will feel driven, in fact. You will feel compelled to stand up with that fire in you and act. You will feel compelled, in fact, to shine 
with the fire that God has given you. It is human nature to want to be part of something bigger than just yourself. This instinct we know can go awry and people can join gangs and cults and all manner of crazy groups in order for people to feel like they are a part of something bigger than just themselves. And I'm so glad that you instead joined the church to be part of that something bigger than just you. And that something will go so much farther than you as it has for thousands of years before you. It will outlive you. It will give your life meaning. It will give you a vehicle to pass on your legacy to your children, to your children's children, and to the generations yet to come. Now, you don't need me to tell you how much work there needs to be done. Look at the front page of any newspaper, turn on the internet, look at social media, talk to your friends around the water cooler at work. It is obvious. Are there problems in the world? Sure. How about in our country? Oh, yes. How about in our own city? Yep. Wherever there is suffering, wherever there is loneliness, wherever there is despair or exploitation or abuse or violence or greed, I don't need to list it all. You see it. You talk to me about it. Wherever people are being treated as anything other than beloved children of God, wherever the earth is being ravaged and not honored as God's creation, wherever there is pain, wherever there is destruction, we have work to do. We have jobs to get busy doing. But we are all different. Just like we saw the languages being spoken so beautifully up here, We all have our own language. We all have our own ways to connect with people. We all have different spheres and circles of influence. We all have different platforms on which to speak, but we all have a platform. We all have influence. We all have people that listen to us. We just have different people. We all have different work to do. We have different ways then to heal this suffering world, this world that Jesus says, is so blessed. And so we come to a point where we're not just here to receive. As much as it's okay for a season, even a long one, eventually we'll find that it's time to give. It's time to act, not alone, but with one another and with the power of the Holy Spirit, that fire in our soul, we can't help it, but speak and act for the good of God and God's world. This is from Sister Joan Chittister in her book, The Time is Now a Call to Uncommon Courage. She says, after we've said our prayers and checked the news, shaken our heads and turned off the TV commentators in despair and disgust, we suddenly remember someone who needs the help we just heard about. And then we ask ourselves what we really stand for and what we've done to prove it. At that moment, we either become prophets or simply churchgoers. And that is the ultimate question. That is the question we all must answer. And you, what are you going to do about it? So if you are just now becoming a member of this local church, or if you've been a member for years and years, maybe even decades, please know that your membership is not about being on some roster, in some role book, so we can take attendance. It's not about filling up the seats here in this sanctuary. It's about the fact that you are members of a body the mystical body of Christ himself. You have been given everything. You have been given grace and mercy, the presence of God to help and guide you and love overflowing. You will never have those things taken away from you. You are a member of Christ's body. You have also been given Christ's very spirit. That is no small thing. That is the fire in your belly. That is the power of God in this world that will compel you to act. That is the charge to go and make a difference in the name of Jesus Christ and with the power 
of Christ. So new members and older ones, you are a prophet. You are not simply a churchgoer. Thanks be to God. Amen. Stand as we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and, and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trust in God's promise of new life. We pray for the renewal of the church, the world, and all of creation. Come, Holy Spirit, enliven the church to speak your words of forgiveness and salvation in every language and tongue. Pour out your spirit on witnesses of, a, of every age, gender, and nationality. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Come, Holy Spirit, send cooling breezes where people and creatures are suffering oppressive heat. Save the land from drought and wildflower, wildfires. Bless the work of those who make it possible to harness the power of the sun and the wind. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Come, Holy Spirit, dispel human arrogance and establish leaders who are humble of heart. Speak peace into all the world. Overcome prejudice and fear. Move us to support international aid organizations and those who provide aid to immigrants and refugees. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Come, Holy Spirit. You hear us when we cry to you. Bring clarity and hope to those living with dementia, anxiety, depression, or addiction. Accompany those who feel weak and worn. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal your love through families of all shapes and sizes. Bring joy to co-parents, single parents, and those without children. Bless extended families, foster families, adoptive families, and families of friends. Bring closure and healing to broken relationships. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Please offer aloud any prayers on your hearts. For prayers spoken aloud and those kept in the silence of our hearts, hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Come, Holy Spirit, you make us children of God and joint heirs with Christ. 
We praise you for all the saints who called on your name and who now know the fullness of your salvation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We commend these and all our prayers to you, O God. Come near to us with your saving help. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we now receive our offerings. Let us pray. Risen one, as you broke bread with the disciples on the shore, meet us now in this meal. Nourish us to follow you, using our gifts to feed the hungry and tend the weary, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Please stand. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you we praise and glorify. You we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos. You encircled the globe with air. You created fire for warmth and light. You nourished the lands with water. You molded us in your image and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas. You blessed the Israelites and cherished them as your own, that also we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit. You called to us through the life and death of Jesus Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to all his disciples, saying, Take and eat, all of you. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave you thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember your son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others. We remember his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming, when with the world made perfect through your wisdom, our sins and sorrows will be no more. Holy God, send upon us in this meal your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold us in your arms, all who share in this holy food, and nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with the world. Holy God, receive our praise and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy, and fill us with your blessing. Until needy no longer and bound to you in love, we feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb, through whom all glory and honor is yours, O God, O living one, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have been filled with the Holy Spirit and invited to come. I invite you to take a seat now and follow the guidance of the ushers.
And now the blessing of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit surround and sustain you, keep you from harm, and fill you with courage. Amen. And remember during this last song, if you'd like, please be careful with children, but if you'd like, you can light a candle and leave it there and say a prayer for yourself and for the world. For the bright and the
Lift up your hands and clap for joy The time's drawing near When he will appear And oh, we'll stand by his side His strong, pure spot is bright song of the Sing a song of celebration Lift up a shout of praise For the bridegroom will come The glorious one And oh, we will look on his face Dance with all your might, lift up your hands and clap for joy, the time's drawing near. Join all of our new members at our reception in the Fellowship Hall. We've got cake and cupcakes thanks to Christy and Casey. Yay. <laughs>